Hey guys, welcome back to the Environmental 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to have a dynamic crosshair, in which I mean that the color will change depending on if you are hovering over an enemy or a friendly, so a teammate. So I'll show you what it's like now. So you can see by default we have this white crosshair here, so it's neutral. If I hover over a teammate or a friendly, it's going to be blue. If I hover off, it'll be neutral again. And I go over an enemy, it's going to be red. And this will work perfectly for any amount that you have. So however many enemies and friendlies you have, and teammates and stuff like that, this will work perfectly. So I can say blue for a teammate, white for neutral, red for an enemy. And you can choose whichever colors you want. You can have these to look however you like and you don't need the neutral if you don't want as well. But this is what we're gonna be making today. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've made it. So what we want to do first is we want to create the widget for our crosshair to be on. So to do that, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to user interface, I'm gonna get a widget blueprint. I'm just gonna name this crosshair widget. You can name this absolutely whatever you like. I'm going to open it up straight away. In here, I'm going to add an image. So we just search for image up here, drag and drop it in there like so. This image, I'm going to set to be my neutral crosshair and I'm doing that just for reference of the scale. So for me, that's going to be neutral crosshair like that. And I will be leaving a link to download these in the description down below. So what I have is just three simple crosshairs like this. So I've got, actually I'll show you in Unreal so it's got a background on. So we've got a neutral like so. We've got a teammate and we've got an enemy. So we have white, blue, and red. So I'm gonna be using these today. Now you can just change the color, but doing it this way just makes it look a little bit better as obviously these are designed perfectly for each one. So again, I'm doing it this way. So back in the widget, we're gonna add in this image of our neutral crosshair. You can scale this up to be the size that you want it to be on your screen. So I think that something around that big will be good. That might be a bit too big. You can set this to be whatever you like but this is what I'm having mainly for the purpose of the tutorial, just so I can easily show you what it's gonna look like. Once we've done that, we're gonna anchor it to the center of the screen like so. So that's pretty much perfect already. So I'm just gonna move it into the middle of the screen and make sure it's anchored there as well, so it doesn't move from there, like so. And now we have our crosshair in the center of our screen like that. So I'm gonna compile and save. Now what we want to do is we want to select this image again, and then where we have brush here, where we set the neutral crosshair, I'm gonna hit the bind button, I'm gonna create a binding. And what a binding does is it means that the image is going to change dependent on certain values. And these values are obviously going to be if we want it to be neutral, if we're hovering over an enemy, or if we're friendly over a friendly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this return node out just a little bit like that. In here, I'm going to create two branches. So I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, plugging that into the get brush zero there. Condition of this is going to be a boolean. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here, creating a boolean like so. I'm going to call this one is friendly, question mark like so, and that will be the condition of this first branch. Out of true, so if it is friendly, I'm gonna go into the first return node here. I'll set up the return value for that in a second. If it's not friendly, we want to see if it's an enemy, because otherwise it's either gonna be friendly, it's gonna be an enemy, or it's gonna be neutral. So if we hold down B, left click again to get another branch, plugging that into the false of the first branch, and the condition of this one is gonna be another variable, so we hit plus variable, getting a boolean, and call this one is enemy. And a boolean is just a true or false value. I'm going to drag that one in to be the condition of that branch. Again, true, it's going to be a return node, so we can just duplicate that, select it, control C, control V, return node off of true, and the same for false. So duplicate the return node again, plugging that into false, like so. Now let's add in the return values, and the return value is going to be different images. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click return value here, promote to variable, and this one is going to be for a friendly, so I'll call this friendly, or teammate, or ally, anything like that, and I'll put crosshair image just so it makes sense, but again, set it to whatever you like. So that's friendly, let me right click the second return value, promote to variable, this one is gonna be our enemy, like so, and then the bottom one is gonna be neutral. And compile and save that, and now you can see if the other person that we're looking at is friendly, it's gonna give us the friendly crosshair, if it's an enemy, it will give us the enemy crosshair, and if it's neither friendly or an enemy, it's gonna give us the neutral crosshair. So that's gonna work perfectly like so, but now we need to actually set up what these crosshairs look like. So to do that, we can just select each one. So if I select friendly crosshair image there, down in the bottom left, we have image. If I just search for neutral, so neutral crosshair like so, and if I select the enemy, set this to be the enemy crosshair, and then if I select, oh sorry, the top one's not neutral, sorry, it's friendly. So I probably call it teammate actually. Yeah, teammate crosshair for the top one, enemy for the middle one, and neutral for the bottom one, like so. And now this will work perfectly, so we can compile and save that. And now dependent on what these Boolean values tell us, we're gonna be setting different images for our crosshairs. So they're gonna be changing color. 
So that's going to work perfectly. So we can now compile, save, and close that widget. And now what we want to do next is we want to actually create this widget so the player can see it on the screen. So to do that, and for the rest of the code, we're going to be opening up the character blueprint. So for me, that's going to be content, first person BP, blueprints, first person character. But for you, this could be first, third, or whatever you've named it. Once we're in here, we want to go to event begin play, which for me is right up at the very top of the code. It might be somewhere different for you. If you can't find it or haven't used it, just right click and get event begin play, and it should take you there like so. And again, because this has already been used, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it out a little bit like so, and I'm going to hold on S and left click to get a sequence. This just allows us to use multiple lines of code. Then zero is going to go into the code we already have, and out of then one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out of that, and I'm going to create widget like so, with the class being the crosshair widget which I've just made. And then on the return value, I'm going to right click, promote to variable. I'm just going to call this one HUD ref or actually crosshair ref or widget, anything like that, which makes the most sense to you. And then out of that, I'm going to simply add to viewport. So now we have access to the crosshair reference so we can set the Boolean values when we want. And it's going to be adding it to the player screen at the beginning of the game, which will work great for us. So if we move that out, we compile and save, and now we should see this working. So if we minimize, hit play, you can see we have the crosshair on screen. Again, that might be a bit big for you, but that's why I want it. So you can see we now have this crosshair on screen like so. Obviously, we haven't set up the other code for it yet, so it's going to be staying white in our neutral one as it's not going to be changing. So let's set that up now. So let's go back into our character blueprint here, and let's go down here and find some empty space. So once we're there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a custom event, I'm just going to call this check if enemy. Now what I'm doing here, you can do off of event tick, but this will just be slightly more efficient as we obviously don't want to be using event tick as much as we can. We want to be doing it differently. So custom events are more efficient. However, this will still work on tick if you'd prefer to do that. Out of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that and get a line trace by channel like so. And we're going to be using a line trace to draw a line out of the player to see what they're looking at and what they're going to be hovering over. So for the start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop a reference to the first person camera here. Out of that, I'm going to get world location. The return value of that is just going to go straight into the start there. Back out of the first person camera again, I'm going to get forward vector like so. At the return value of that, I'm going to get a multiply, so a vector multiplied by a float. This float value here is essentially just how long the line is going to be, so how far out you want to check. I'm going to set this to be something quite high, so about 10,000, but you can set this to be whatever you want. Now that is very high, however again, set this to be what you want. I just want it so that no matter how far the player is looking, so it can be quite a big distance, this line trace will still be working. And I'll show you what that's going to look like in a second. So now if we come out of this return value and get an addition, so a vector plus a vector, I'm going to plug those in the other way around there, and plug that into the end. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the first person camera's location. That's going to be the start of our line. And it's going to get the forward direction of the camera, draw a line out 10,000 units, and then add it to the location to keep it a straight line. And that'll be the end. So it's going to draw a line from the camera 10,000 units in front. And then if we change draw debug type from non to for duration, and if I just right click and event tick, plug that into the line trace there. This is just a test. Now if I save that, minimize we should see what this looks like so we can see we're going to be getting a line trace that's going to be very long there so this is what it's going to look like you get a line trace 10,000 units long just directly in front of the camera so you can see when we look over the enemy there or over each individual ai that's going to be registering it like so so you can see it's green as it's being registered so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to delete the event tick and change it from for duration back to none as that was just a test to make sure it's working so we compile and save that again after this line trace, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug in the condition in a return value of the line trace like so. And what this means is that it's basically if this line trace hits something. So obviously we don't want to do it if it doesn't hit anything, only if it does. The out hit, I'm going to come out of that and break hit result. I'm going to open up the more settings there. Out of the hit actor, I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to get a has tag. So actor has tag, hold down B, left click to get another branch. The condition going in the actor has tag there and this branch going into the true of the first branch so what this is doing now is again if the line trace hits something it's going to check to see if the actor that it hits so it has to be an actor and this actor 
has to have the tag which we'll put in there. We'll set up the tags in a minute, but we can write it in here. So what I'm gonna have for the first tag is friendly or teammate or ally. Whatever you want to name it, put the tag in there. After that, so after the branch, what we're gonna do is set the Boolean values that we have earlier. So I'm gonna drag and drop a reference to my crosshair ref here. So get crosshair ref. Out of that, I'm going to set it friendly. So obviously, if it's friendly, it's gonna come out true. We're hovering over friendly. So we'll come out of this and set is friendly. Plugging that into true there, like so. I'm gonna tick that so is friendly is true. Out of the crosshair ref again, I'm going to set is enemy. I'm gonna set that to be false. Now you might be wondering why we're doing that. It's basically just so we can reset it for every other time we look at something else. So if we look at an enemy and then we look over a friendly, it will reset the enemy to be false. So that's gonna work perfectly like so. So leave it as false. Then come out of it again, or actually we can just duplicate these. So select those, control C, control V, and then connect the target up to the crosshair ref like so. And then plug the first set is friendly into the false there. I'm gonna untick is friendly and tick is enemy. So basically if it hits something, if the actor has the tag of friendly, we're gonna set the boolean to be friendly and enemy to false. And then if it's the other way around, if it's not a friendly, it will send friendly to false and enemy to true. So this is now gonna change our crosshair to be blue hovering over friendly and false hovering over an enemy. But we're not quite finished yet as we need to set up the neutral code as well. So to do that, it's very simple. All we need to do is come out of the hit actor again. I'm going to once again get actor has tag one final time. And this tag is now going to be enemy. So we have friendly and we have enemy. This is going to go into another branch. So hold down B, left click. We're going to plug this branch into the final set is enemy where it's true. So I'll false of that one there like so. Again, the condition of that actor has tag there. If I just double click this line and get a reroot node just to keep it nice and organized like so. If we go back to this branch here, what I'm going to do is true, but I just want to set is enemy to true. So actually this set enemy here, that also wants to be false. That doesn't want to be true there as this is actually the neutral part. So this here is neutral, this is friendly, this is going to be enemy. So let me just comment this as well, just so you know. So I'm going to select those, hit C, comment this friendly, select these, hit C, comment this enemy. You don't need to do that. It's just so you understand what it is and what each part does. Then after this one, I'm going to come out of the crosshair ref again and set is enemy to be true, plugging that in the true value for the branch there. And now this is going to be our enemy part. So if we hit C to comment it again. I'm just going to call this one enemy. Again, not necessary at all. And so now this is going to work. If we're hovering over the enemy, it'll be red. If we're hovering over a friendly, it'll be blue. If we're not hovering over anything, it's going to be white. However, we need to actually call this. So A, this isn't calling, and B, when it is, it's only doing it once. So if you did this off of event tick, then you're finished, that's the code done, but I didn't. So there's one other thing I need to do. So down here towards the end, I'm gonna hold down D and left click to get a delay. The duration of this is gonna be 0 0.001, which is something very small. Out of the completed of this, I'm just going to call the custom event, check if enemy, like so. The delay is gonna go into the end of these codes here, so set is enemy like so. And then also I want to have it off of the false of this first branch here coming out of the line trace going in there as well. And the reason we're doing this is basically just so we can recall the code and the function again so it's in a loop, which is again why event tick would work, but it's not as efficient. And the reason we have this delay here is just so it has time to finish firing off this code before calling it again so we don't get a fatal error of infinite loop detected. So that is gonna work. One final thing we need to do now is just distinguish between a friendly and an enemy. So that's very simple to do, but the actual code part is now done. So I just select all of this and hit C to comment it. I'm just gonna do crosshair color like so. Crosshair colors, compile, save, and then close that. Now what we want to do is we want to open up our AI blueprints or our enemy and friendly blueprints, which is basically the other actors you're gonna have. So I'll open that. So for me, that's content, crosshair, and we have AIE and AIF for AI enemy and AI friendly. And you can see that for the enemy, I have a red box above them and the friendly, I have a blue box just to distinguish between them. So if I select the enemy again, what I'm gonna do is select the self up at the top left up here. So select AIE self. At the top right, I'm gonna search for tag, hit plus tag there. I'm gonna call this one enemy, making sure that this is spelt the exact same way I spelt it in the previous code for where we have actor has tag. And that is that part done. Close that, compile, save, on to the next one. This one's friendly. Search for again tag after selecting self plus tag. Call this one 
friendly, again, giving it the exact same name and spelling you gave it before. And close, compile, save, and close that. And this is now the code done. We have completely finished it. So we've distinguished between a friendly and an enemy. And now we're going to change the crosshair on that as well. So actually, sorry, there's one more thing I forgot to do. We need to go back into the first person blueprint, which is your character blueprint. We actually need to call this for the first time. So that's very simple. All we need to do is go up to event begin play here where we are creating the widget here. We need to add a pin out of then two. We're just going to simply call function, check if enemy, and now the code is done. So we can compile, save, and this code should work perfectly. So if we hit play to test this, you can see we have a white neutral crosshair here, no matter what we're looking at. If we look at the friendly, it's going to be blue. If we look at the enemy, it's going to be red, although that hasn't actually worked. So let's see why. And I think I know why, because this false branch here, we also didn't connect up to the loop. So basically, it's just going to end there off of neutral. It will end the loop. So make sure that we have all of our ends connected to the delay to reset the loop here. So I've now connected that. So we hit compile and save. This should now work a lot better. So you see we have neutral looking over nothing, looking over the friendly, we have blue, and looking over the enemy, we have red. So that works perfectly. We've got white, we've got blue, white, and red. So this is working great. If we're looking over a friendly, it'll be blue. Looking over an enemy, it'll be red. Looking over nothing, it'll be white. And if you want it so you don't have it when you're far away, again, you just change the distance in the line trace, which I showed you earlier. So when we're multiplying, you just lower this value. Like I say, this is working perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we want to do. We set up a dynamic crosshair system in which when we're hovering over nothing, it's gonna be a neutral white color. When we hover over our teammates or a friendly and ally, it will be blue. And then when we hover over an enemy, it's gonna be red. So you can use this however you like, but this is how we're gonna do that and it works great. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.